Okay, so I want to pick up where we left off last time, which was we want to compute probabilities that involve the Gaussian distribution, right? So usually we do that by saying, okay, this probability computation involves the CDF, which is some Gaussian involving uh, arbitrary mu and sigma. This is the form of the CDF, and we're going to convert that to what we call a standard normal that is a Gaussian that has mean zero and sigma equals to one, right? And then we're going to use tables to kind of process our way through to find the numbers that we want. So this is a little bit abstract, so I just want to do a whole bunch of example problems that you might see. So, for example, let's suppose that x is Gaussian with mean mu equal to 5 and standard deviation equal to 2. What is the probability that x is greater than 8? Okay, so first we have to convert this to something that we can find in a table, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, the probability that x is greater than 8 is the same as the probability that x minus 5 over 2 is greater than 8 minus 5 over 2. Now this thing is going to be a random variable that's Gaussian that has mean 0 and standard deviation 1, and then the right hand side is the number that I can look up in the table. So let me just say, I always find it's really handy to draw a little picture of what I'm looking for, right? So here's a little Gaussian, and the original problem is how much is left in the tail of a Gaussian like this. What I'm doing is I'm converting it to a Gaussian that looks like this, and I'm asking what is the number such that the area under these curves has the same probability, right? One way to think about this is that, you know, here's uh, seven, so seven is one standard deviation away from the mean, so eight is one and a half standard deviations away from the mean. So that's kind of where you can get the one and a half from without even going through this process. And so now how do I find this z greater than one and a half, now this is where I have to look into a table or something. And so luckily, um, you know, if I'm giving an exam or something like that, usually I'll give the students a table like this. And so I would say, oh, I can look up in my table that uh, the one and a half number is this, which is about 0 0.06. And so my answer here would be like 0 0.0668, right? Okay, so I can also use this to compute probabilities of kind of arbitrary uh, intervals, okay? So let's use the same Gaussian, mean 5, sigma equals 2, and I want to know now what is the probability that um, 3 is, that x is in the range 3 to 6, okay? So again, drawing my picture, I've got the mean is 5, 3 is over here, 6 is over here, and I want to know what is the probability of being in this interval, okay? Well, I can kind of already see that, you know, 3 is kind of one standard deviation away on the left, and 6 is half a standard deviation away on the right, but if I want to be really precise about it, I could say, okay, well, that's like saying, here's my uh, one CDF, and here's my other CDF. Whatever is left in between those numbers is the uh, value that I want, right? So this here is like um, the Q function. Well, actually, I should be more specific. So the phi function is the CDF, right? So this is like saying I take 6 minus 5 over 2, and this is 3 minus 5 over 2. So this is phi of 1 half, and this is phi of negative 1. And I know that the phi is related to the CDF by the Q function. So this is like saying 1 minus Q of 1 half. And then this is 1 minus Q of negative 1. Now one thing that you'll notice in these tables is that there are no negative numbers, right? I only have this for positive Z. So one thing to think about is to say, okay, well, I know that Q of negative 1, right, has got to be 1 minus Q of 1. If I think about looking at the looking at the picture, this is like saying that if I want to know what is this number, it's 1 minus this big number, right? So I can kind of turn this around and say this is 1 minus Q of a half minus Q of 1. And then I could look at my table, I could say, okay, well, Q of a half is, I guess I don't need this guy anymore, Q of a half is this number, and q of 1 is this number. Yeah. Highlight. And so now my answer would be um, 
1 minus 0 0.3085 minus 0 0.01587, whatever that is, and that would be my number, right? I guess this, if I'm being, well, I guess I should be careful. This is not 0 0.01, this is just 0 0.1, right? So it's about 55, right? So 0 0.532. Okay, so what about kind of backwards problems, right? So sometimes you'll get asked a question like um, going in reverse. So let's suppose that, um, oh, I have to take my PDF thing off here, one second. So let's suppose that X is a Gaussian with mean five, and now let's make the standard deviation equal to three, okay? Find A such that the probability that x is less than a is equal to 0 0.9, okay? Well, again, let's draw the picture. So the picture is, here's five. I wanna find some a over here, such that the area under the curve adds up to 0.9, okay? So a different way of looking at this is finding a so that the area under here is 0 0.1 okay so now i could look back at my table and i could say okay well i need to find a number such that um, i'm approximately equal to 0 0.1 and i can kind of see over here that it definitely is somewhere between uh, 1.2 and 1.3 probably closer to 1.3 so if i was doing this like on paper and pencil the best i could do would be to say something like it's about you know 1.2 something you know I would guess maybe it's 1.28 or 1.29. The better way to do it, if you have access to a web browser, is to use something like Wolfram Alpha, and you can actually type in Q functions and find um, answers. So here I can see that Q of 1.26 is uh, 0.103, so a little bit off. So 1.27 is a little bit closer, not there yet. 1.28 is pretty much on the button and 1.29 is too far so again if i was going to do this with a computer i would say 1.28 let's say is my number okay and now i have to say okay that means i have to convert this back to my standard from my standard gaussian to the one that i have right so this is like saying i'm 1.28 standard deviations away from the mean so the actual value that i want is the mean plus 1.28 times the standard deviation. And so I could compute this and it would be 8.84, right? All right, so let's do another problem slightly like this. Um, so let's suppose that um, I have the same setup, uh, mean five, sigma three. And now I wanna know, find some number B such that the probability that seven is less than the random variable is less than B is equal to 0 0.2. Okay, so again, let's draw the picture. So here's the mean, here is seven. B has to be greater than seven. And I wanna know how can I make sure that there is 0 0.2 probability sandwiched in between seven and B, okay? So there are a couple of ways of thinking about this, right? The seven is something that I know and the B is something that I don't know, right? So first we could figure out, okay, what is the um, what is the Q function for the seven part? Well, seven minus five over three is Q of two thirds. I guess while I have this up here, I could actually you know, put this in Wolfram Alpha. So Q of two thirds is about 0.25, okay? And so that's kind of like saying, okay, well, there's 0.25 left in the whole tail, and now I want to find B such that the rest of it only has 0 0.5 left. So now I'm trying to figure out what is B so that there's 0 0.05 left in the tail. It's hard to use Wolfram Alpha for this. I mean, there are ways to like figure out the relationship between the Q function and this ERF or ERFC function that you see here, but it's a little bit complicated. So what I could do is go back to my table and say, okay, now I want to find a number so that I'm approximately 
0 0.05. And I can see from my uh, table that that's probably going to be um, somewhere around here, right? Between 1.6 and 1.7. This is kind of the range where I'm going to get 0 0.05. So I might guess, for example, it's about halfway in between. Let's suppose that um, I'm going to use 1.64. So I'm saying, okay, B has to be 1.64 standard deviations away from the mean. So again, B is 5 plus the standard deviation times 1.64, which is 9.92. Okay. So again, it depends on what you have in front of you. Either you have a printed table or you have Wolfram Alpha, and you can get more precise numbers if you use Wolfram Alpha. But if you show that you understand the concept using the table, I would generally be happy on an exam or something like that. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a better intuition for how to work with these kinds of uh, Q tables. See you next time.